Here's what Diablo 2 players get wrong about Diablo 4. Restricted trading is terrible for the game. This is a big complaint in the community. Implementing unrestricted trade is a decision that creates an ecosystem around not playing the game. Why kill monsters or farm bosses when you can look at Discord all day to trade? That is ultimately what happens when I want to generate wealth in Diablo 2. And to be honest, I don't want to stare at Discord, I want to play the game. Now, trading can be seen on a spectrum where one side is no trading, and then on the other side is unrestricted trading. Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 are on the opposite ends of this spectrum when it comes to gearing up your character. In Diablo 3, with no trading allowed, you get all your gear in a weekend with a massively inflated drop rate. In Diablo 2, you get all of your gear in a weekend by trading. Both of these are dog water because they are extremes and like most things in life, the real good answer is somewhere in the middle. Blizzard needs to make sure that the incentives are around actually playing the game, which is what they're doing with Diablo 4. Trading undermines Diablo's core gameplay, and Blizzard acknowledged this in their post when they removed the auction house for Diablo 3. Keeping tradable items to rares is a solution that's in the middle and is a good place to start. Limiting it only to rares has a side benefit of creating an obstacle for people making the bots. In Diablo 2, a bot basically does this. Burrun, pick up, done. No evaluation of the item necessary. With rares in Diablo 4, not only does the bot have to scan and pick up items, they have to evaluate the rolls on them as well. It's really hard to pinpoint the value of rares in Diablo 2, mainly because you need the exact combination of rolls for it to be good, and Diablo 4 seems to be the same way. And even if botters solve this part of the game with the rares, there's still an incentive to play the game because rares are only one part of gearing up a character. You still have to farm for the legendary powers, uniques, and using that gear to climb the eventual leaderboard. Basically, all I'm saying is that we need to be playing the game. Anyone who says that Diablo is only fun if they're botting or trading in a Discord is really saying that Diablo, as a game, is bad. And that only the items are good. And really, you can't say that a game is good if the best way to enjoy the game is by not playing it. And that's not what Diablo 4 should be. Diablo 4 gameplay is repetitive and garbage. As a person that makes videos farming for loot by doing thousands and thousands of runs in Diablo 2, I will say that Diablo 4 and Diablo 3 have better endgame than Diablo 2. Why? Because you can actually test your gear and test your progression. What happens in Diablo 2? You farm for your gear, then what? Uber Trist? You don't need gear for that. Level to 99? That's an achievement, not endgame. You can farm faster? For what? You got gear already. It's very common for people to actually lose interest to farm once they get all the gear. At least in Diablo 3, you had the greater rifts to do to actually test your gear. The leaderboard alone is more than anything Diablo 2 offers in this particular area called Endgame. In Diablo 4, mimicking something like Mythic Plus from World of Warcraft dungeons with the affixes and dungeon keys is a good start. It gives Blizzard the tools to add and remove affixes to keep the game interesting by allowing them to experiment. Now, can these dungeons start off badly? Absolutely. Just take a look at what happened in the beta with the dungeon design feedback with the dungeons themselves. Massive backtracking. But Blizzard took the feedback and addressed it, and that's all we can really ask for. The only question is how committed is Blizzard to making Diablo a great game over time? If they don't commit, then the game will die. It's as simple as that. Itemization is so bad. Now, one thing that Diablo 2 does get right is how the game can get players excited about the gear. High runes, a griffins, or an SOJ are all items to get excited about when thinking about farming. But that doesn't mean that this feeling for items will automatically be absent in other games. It is absolutely possible in Diablo 4. I think the main reason why there's a lot of pushback to a more MMO-like direction in Diablo 4 is because items are normally just a number that you equip. The lack of excitement for items is really common in a lot of MMOs. In World of Warcraft Retail, you just don't get excited about the gear. You raid, you increase the item level, and you replace it with the next raid tier. Pretty boring. However, 
Getting excited about gear was not completely absent in WoW. In Vanilla, you had Perdition's Blade. In Burning Crusade, you had the Dragonspine Trophy. And the Warglaves. These are examples of items where players got really excited about, and it was in an MMO. All I'm saying is that it's possible, it just needs to be done right. Now I don't personally know how to get players excited about items, because I don't know why I get excited about items, but I can tell you ways where you can't get players excited about items. Number 1. Putting a rarity color on an item will not automatically make players excited. This is just not the way. Just because an item is orange or purple just doesn't make it exciting. You're basically telling me what to be excited about and that doesn't work. Number 2. Using the name from a popular item from an old game will not automatically make players excited. You're trying to tell me what to get excited about. This is basically an easter egg. Typically what happens with easter eggs is that you look at the easter egg, say, oh cool, and then you move on. You know, I think I saw Shaco earlier there in uh, the list of unique items. That's correct. Damn it, Blizzard! Number three, making it available in the cash shop. This just makes things that would have otherwise been cool, uncool, because it becomes too readily available. One example is a Celestial Steed from World of Warcraft, the first microtransaction mount that was released. And it was released with a mixed reaction. I know this is anecdotal, but I knew a person that was excited to get the Celestial Steed because it looked like the Spectral Tiger, but when they actually bought the Celestial Steed, they instantly got buyer's remorse because everyone had it. Not a way to get the players excited. It seems that getting players excited about items occurs so organically that it might just be a chance that it happens and cannot actually be controlled. Who knows? Also, as far as the actual itemization itself, the specific item stats, I don't know how anyone can make a judgment of itemization without actually playing endgame and seeing how all the gear interacts. You need a playtest to make a proper evaluation when it comes to something like this. It's like evaluating a new Hearthstone card. You don't know if it's going to be good or bad until you playtest. Something that looks like a 10 out of 10 may actually flop. Now I'm not saying that you can't sniff test it, but that's all you can really do. There shouldn't be affixes that are overly complicated for no reason. I'm looking at you, X damage reduction from far away enemies. Why is this in here? I guess I'll find out when I play the end game. Then I can make a judgment whether it was actually a dumb decision to have this stat or not. Also, anyone who says D2 itemization was awesome does not know what they are talking about. It is not great. Every build says to use Enigma for every class. Look at these guides for all the other classes. Kali, Enigma. Necro, Enigma. Druid, Assassin, Barbarian, Enigma, Enigma, Enigma. How is that good itemization? It's not interesting, it's not choice. These people are complaining about the fact that they get excited about farming for particular items with actual itemization. They are two different things, but both are important. They say you can't polish a turd, and that is true. But D4 is not starting out as a turd. I'm not saying Diablo 4 will be a surefire success, but Blizzard's effort into the game is clear, and they're making a lot of decisions with community feedback in mind. And that's a good thing. They just have to remain committed to give it the polish that it needs to shine. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you guys when the game launches.